the beginning, there was a wall. It was a good wall, but not a very interesting one. Then many people came together with a vision, a vision of color, of texture, of new dimensions. With barely a day of rest, Milton High School artists worked on their creation. And from this wall sprang vibrant life, and it was good. But back to the beginning. This wall resides in the Milton Public Library at 430 East High Street in Milton, Wisconsin. This project is the first in a series of interior improvements planned for the Milton Public Library. Library Director Pat Conrad loved the idea from the start. Oh, this will be really neat because this area here um, is used primarily by children. Um, the youth come over here and we are planning on redoing where our story hours are going to be held and hopefully it will be in this, in this corner. Um, we are about to start a project with the Milton School District honor art students. Uh, they're going to be painting a wall mural. The teacher in charge of this project is Connie Beer. She's the art teacher at Northside uh, School in Milton and she will be bringing over five to six art students for the summer school session. Uh, they'll be starting on Wednesday, June 11th and working through uh, July 3rd and the goal is to complete the project in that time period so in order to do that they'll be working a lot they'll come in the morning like at 8 30 um, and they'll work till 11 30 and then they're going to have to come back as well throughout the day to get it done Connie's idea was to incorporate library, a library theme into this picture. Uh, so, for example, she hasn't given me any details or specifics, but um, she might have a book bag in this uh, woman's hand instead of the, the pets. Um, she might have this girl uh, reading a book instead of looking at the flowers. So, um, Connie wanted to, to base the wall mural on this picture and then she was even talking about maybe putting the Milton house somewhere in the background so many minds came together to create this artistic piece perhaps one of the first was friends of the Milton Public Library member Linda like so and I actually saw this idea a number of years ago in a um, library newsletter it was a different library newsletter where they had paintings done for the library and at a friends meeting um, a couple of years ago, we were talking about that, and um, Pat Conrad decided, why don't we call the art teachers, and they came up with the idea of doing a mural, and I believe Connie uh, Beer is going to be leading this project, and then the students are going to um, help her. Before the students begin working, certain preparations need to be done. In order to um, start this project, we'll have uh, some volunteers come in and they'll prep the wall by uh, sanding it, washing it with TSP, and then priming it. Um, and then we'll bring over some scaffolding, um, put down some drop cloths, and get started. Not going to cost the library hardly anything. I mean, we just had, I just came from Ace and I probably spent thirty dollars on the primer and the brushes the drop cloth so um other than that i think that's the only library expense so it's really going to be a neat project with the wall properly prepared the students arrive to settle into their four-week home away from home here they form a plan and make the first of many revisions somebody want to tell them what we've decided to do more <laughs> <laughs> That's well, about it. Like a half full deck, half painting. Because in the, in the middle, we're going to have a big square or a rectangle that will be. Mm -hmm. And then, like, about two feet around it is going to be painting. Okay. So we're just going to, like, wherever we leave off the deck, we're just going to keep painting. In order to duplicate the look of the original artwork, the students trace specific elements, which are then copied onto transparencies. Tree. 
The transparencies are projected onto the wall and the images are placed and sized. Three days into the month-long project, the unexpected happens. Um, the, what happened is on Friday, one of the girls pulled off. We were all started. We have a lot of tile up. One of the girls pulled off a tile. And when it came off, we saw a paper underneath. And I didn't think a lot about it at the time. I just thought we should seal it up a little bit and it would be okay. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that we might have a disaster on our hands, that the whole wall, once we get it all up and we have to grout it, the grout is quite wet so that could seep behind the pieces and then just lift everything off and fall off. So we had to go to plan B, which was to switch walls, this concrete wall, which is the one we've done the murals on before um, at Northside, really is the kind of solid surface that we need to do it. Once again, the transparencies go up. And the tiles go on. Early into the project, the artists learn that a mosaic is a little more difficult than they thought. I mean, it's, you really have to think it through a lot more than painting. You can't go over it. You have to take everything off if you mess up. and It's a lot, of, it's a lot harder. It's cutting and burning and hurtful things. <laughs> mm. Trying to get the pieces to fit, I guess. Because you can cut them any way you want, but that doesn't mean they're going to fit together in the way that you need them. Well, everybody's been coming in on their own time after the official class time has ended, so some people have been spending a lot of time here. For four weeks, one corner of the Milton Public Library is littered with buckets of tiles, yards of canvas, power cords, ladders, many tools of the artists working their magic. But perhaps the most popular tool of all, the first aid kit. Well, everybody keeps finding these cuts that they don't know how they got, and burns and other problems. And every once in a while, we get a finger stuck to the wall or knee. Not when you forget where you put the glue gun, then you go over and touch it or glue your finger instead of the tile. So, yeah, it's hard to aim on the little pieces, so. Well, when you break all the glass and the ceramics pieces, um, you cut yourself a lot with it all flying up in your face and whatever. And usually you'll wear like goggles or something when you do it. Um, you burn yourself a lot too with the hot glue guns. That really hurts. You always get like blisters on your fingers and whatever. Your thumbs usually get burnt the most because you're always putting your, the pieces on with your thumb and it gets burnt a lot of times during the day. So, you know, whatever. But we suffer through it all and we get it all done, so. It's all good. The artists aren't the only ones who toil with the tiles. Faculty supervisor Connie Beer pastes her share of ceramic to the wall. Even she learns a thing or two during the course of this project. One thing I did learn was I was trying to get this chartreuse green, and I tried every glaze, glaze combination I could find, and it wouldn't work, and so I called Saks. Arts and Crafts in Milwaukee and asked to speak to their glaze expert and um, they told me what would work and nailed it to me and it obviously this beautiful chartreuse green color right here comes from Saks in New Berlin. Glazing the tiles just like cutting and gluing the tiles turns out to be a day long and tedious process. First the tiles must be cleaned.
then painted. then thoroughly dried. After that, the tiles are painted again, then dried, then painted again, and dried. Finally, the tiles are ready for the kiln. Seven to eight more hours of firing at 2,000 degree temperatures, then 10 additional hours to cool. Meanwhile, work continues at the Milton Public Library. As each tile piece must complement those next to it, so must each artist's talents accompany the others. Everybody has their own little thing. Everybody has their own little piece on the mosaic, and everybody just it flows together really nice and everybody has their own little style and it really complements one another. So. I thought it would be hard and I was really nervous at first, but the people we've been working with has made it great and it's fun and I like it and that as hard as I thought it would be. So I like it. And I hope I get to do one again. <laughs> Understanding that it's of the total project we have to think about, not just individual work and they have been wonderful about that. And, very encouraging to each other and giving suggestions and every now and then we all take a break go back we sit down we look at it we critique it we say that doesn't look right this needs to be changed or I really like how that looks but kids are really working um, as a single unit in, to get this project done and I'm, I'm really impressed with that also impressive is how a few secrets snuck into this month-long project for instance, each student signed his or her name on the wall before gluing tiles over their sketch. Remember watching Amber painting tiles? She signed her name into the paint. That tile may be in pieces now, but it is on the wall somewhere. And you'll just have to visit the library in person if you want to find the heart-shaped tile near the orange lady's hip. The final, yet probably the least enchanting phase in the long process is applying the grout. Finally, the four-week project is complete. One thing I have really been impressed with is how 
willing people are to help or just um, people that come into the library all the time are so nice and so encouraging. It's, it's been great to work here in a public place like this.